So I've recently had some messages and comments on my videos which talk about struggling to find your inspiration and your mojo this winter. It's quite a common issue and I've been thinking over this subject and I've come to understand and learn something very valuable that I think will be useful for you guys. So you can find inspiration everywhere. Outdoor photography, magazine subscriptions or books that have stunning locations, good research, good photography. So the issue is not inspiration. We have inspiration at our fingertips everywhere. So the issue is actually I found and it's such a big, such a big thing and not everyone realises it has such a huge impact on your creative flow and that is time. Time, time is the issue. There may be blocks that you have, so whether that's you don't have the time to be doing landscape photography or photography in general, you could have work commitments that are burning you out. There could be a whole host of reasons why you don't have time. If you have time, then you can fully invest your energy, your attention, um, your creative mind and flow into that particular area and then things will just grow from there. If you have time, then you have everything. And I recently discovered this because I was looking back at photographers such as Ansel Adams and all the you know people that kind of paved the way for photography and they spent time out in nature. They didn't have these things online that we have, such as Instagram or Flickr or, mag you know, maybe magazines back then, but not as they are now and accessible as they are now. They had time in nature. They had time in the elements to learn new things and be inspired by nature itself, in its own self, but be inspired by nature. And I feel like I might be actually shooting myself in the foot here with my podcast. But looking online and things online they are great and I'm a massive advocate for finding inspiration through other people or through imagery online of locations or whichever if that's listening to someone's story or listening to like my landscape and um, diary stories you know taking on all of that inspiration to ignite that fire within you but there is a danger there's a danger with it in that you can get a little bit consumed by um, social media and all of this influence that you have from uh, Iceland or from uh, Norway, all these beautiful locations that you might not be able to get to um, and all this stunning photography, it can sometimes feel a little bit overwhelming and it can also feel a little bit confidence bashing as well because you, I think we naturally within ourselves we compare ourselves to other photographers. So my advice to you is actually to come away, <laughs> please listen to my podcast, actually come away from social media, come away from looking at other people, come away from books, uh, magazines, anything that is potentially going to distract you from taking time out in nature. So I wanted to talk about this because I actually think it's a very genuine and honest bit of advice that goes against some of the things that I'm um, starting and promoting. I think that there is a space and a, and a place for that. Um, but if you really want to grow and you really want to see yourself um, developing in a unique way, then spend the time out in locations or doing a type of photography that you love. And that takes me on to the second part of this is once you have the time, so that's the time is the first section of first part of the issue that we have here. The second part is interest. So we often go down little avenues of photography because we are pulled by this inspiration of other people that influence us. We sometimes lose sight of who we actually are and what photography and what things we enjoy photographing. And I think it's really important to look at other work and to develop yourself to learn new skills and find inspiration through that. There is nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that's an issue because I am very much inspired by a lot of people that help help me grow as a photographer however you need to find something you have an interest in so once you have your interest once you have your subject that you enjoy you're naturally going to spend more time doing it so for example I love woodland photography and I spend most of my time in the woodland I love trees that is something I am very passionate about and very interested in and because of that 
I'm spending a lot more time and energy and investment in something I enjoy. Whereas if I felt like I was doing photography that wasn't aligned to me, or that I felt that would serve that, you know, other companies or this or that, then I'm going to struggle to find that motivation and that creative flow. So if you can have two components um, mastered, and that's carving out time, finding an interest, then you won't have an issue finding that inspiration um, that you might desperately be looking for. And that flows nicely onto the last thing that I wanted to talk about. And that's uh, the, the podcast and just a couple of things in general about where the channel's going. So there are a number of landscape photographers online or that you people follow. And I've been thinking of the channel and how best to provide content for you guys, because obviously I'm creating this to add value to you. And I was looking for um, sponsorships for Nisi and companies and reaching out to different brands. And those videos just don't feel natural to me. And I find them not as enjoyable. And I felt like, oh, you know, I have to do this because this is what the audience wants. This is what they want to see. You know, landscape photographer goes out, takes a picture of X. They've got this filter. They've got that tripod. They're talking about the gear. And I've just completely realised I've fallen down this rabbit hole without realising that my videos have become very photography focused and very... Um, gear focused with the like the Nisi products I did recently and that's the whole reason I'm just giving them away because yes however much their their value is in money it doesn't it doesn't it's not any value to me now that I'm seeing that products and business and working with companies is not the direction I want to go in and I think I'd rather give it back to the community where someone can have their story read on the show and you know benefit from new some new filters because I already have some I have the v7 um filter kit so I just think I just want to be honest and genuine and go back to my roots and where my landscape photography channel began and it began with creative writing it began with relaxation and adventure and connecting with nature that's where it began I've been doing singing in the past I've been doing poetry for like the last four years and it stopped, it stopped in my videos, it slowed down because I felt like that's probably what you didn't want to see, but I'm not being true and genuine to myself. So it might be that my channel doesn't grow. It might be that I don't have as many viewers who want to look at the type of gear I'm using. But at least I know I'll be genuine in myself and original in myself of you know things I'm interested in and who I am. So expect to see from this channel more creative writing, more of my authentic self, a lot of things centered around the flow of nature. And I want to take you guys along that journey with me and give you inspiration and connection with the elements, connection with nature, and less so what type of filter to buy, because that's just not me. Um, and if I'm completely honest with myself, and it is a battle because you want to sustain yourself on YouTube, but I'd rather do what's right um, for my style and myself than go down that line with working with companies for now. So I'm probably shooting myself in the foot, <laughs> but we'll just see how it all goes. And I think, is there anything else that I wanted to say to you guys? There was something else, and this is all off the top of my head. What was it? So I want to start a new project and the project is going to be light. And I know, I know before you think, oh, that photographer's done this, you know, about light and this has done this about light and everyone's talking about light and photography. Yes, I know what light is, but sometimes people don't. Maybe I don't. And I want to grow my perception of light in imagery. I want to really, not just on the surface of say, that's good light, let's take a picture. I want to drill deep into how light can transform imagery. So we're going to start off by heading out to the woodland, of course, my favourite place, and look at how light interacts with the landscape and see what images follow. So expect the next few videos to be centred around light and how that interacts with the landscape. So that's the last of the topics I wanted to discuss with you. 
And finally, the podcast. So the reason I started this podcast, now I'll only briefly touch on this because you've been here long enough and your time is very valuable. I started the podcast because I wanted to inspire the people. Um, I read sleep stories to my son. He falls asleep very quickly. And a lot of people have requested this kind of thing um, through comments or through messages because they just like listening to my voice. So it's all kind of followed and come together and I'm quite a mindful person. I listen to sleep stories myself to help me go to sleep. So it's all come together through that. And I also want it to be part of a community as well. I want people's stories shared to help inspire other people or just motivate people to get outside or at the very base, disassociate. You've had a stressful day, you come in from work and you might just want to listen to a calming voice and relax and be taken away to another location. So the first episode of the podcast is called The Isle of Arran, um, Power of the Mountain or The Mountain Power it's called. And it talks about a trip to the Isle of Arran where I did solo hiking um, and camping, uh, wild camping uh, in shepherd's huts, caves, and just anywhere, you, you name it, I was there. And it was a very beautiful, beautiful journey that I went on. And I think it's um, kind of shared with you in narrative form in this podcast. So if you're interested, um, come along and have a listen on Podbean. And if you want to get involved, the plan for that is if you write in your um, story, a diary entry of yourself where you've gone on an adventure and you can creatively write as best you can your experiences, your feelings, your emotions, what you saw, what you felt, what you felt connected to, what you photographed, describe the photograph with the words, it's quite a fun thing to do. And then send your stories in through my website so you can email me, I'll put a link to my email below, email me your story. And the winning story, the best story, will win the Nisi Swift filters. Mm -hmm. So send uh, your best work in if you can, and I'll pick the story. Deadline is the 17th of March. So if you could send those through, it would be very much appreciated. And I'll announce the winner ASAP. So that's everything. I've waffled on long enough. I'm excited for this next project that I'm going to be working on. Um, and we'll see mm -hmm. where it leads me. But thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Well, if that wasn't the best she collected, it must have been Jess. What? You're the best cat in the world. <laughs> this is what? Video on your maternity. Oh yeah.